Anna, for bringing me in today for the great introduction. Uh, yeah, my fear of being allergic to pineapple. We're going to work on our fear of failure here today. Um, but before we get started, I want to just check in with you folks. Who here has ever done improv before? Wow. That's awesome. OK, um, so that's typically not the case. So I'm glad we're going to just jump right in. Uh, so who here has seen this show? Yeah, what show is this? Just yell it out. Yeah, this show is amazing, right? It is hilarious. They do amazing uh, characters. They are so, so funny. This is not what we're doing today. <laughs> so this is not a comedy class, right? We're not going to be doing uh, you know, funny bits, or you know, we're not going to be playing crazy characters or doing accents. I mean, that is all really fun stuff that I love doing. I love coaching it. I love doing it. I love teaching it. But that's not really that helpful in a business context, right? So what we're going to be doing today is using improv in ways that you can use and apply these tools the minute you walk out of this room. It's going to be really simple applications. We're going to have some fun today, right? We're going to, we're going to do interesting exercises, but you're going to use, use them in ways that you can apply it in your class and potentially when you're at work after you're done here at Haas. All right, this is me. I don't have to do this part because Hannah did a wonderful job introducing myself. Uh, these are some of the clients I've worked with. So the point of this slide is to get an ooh and an ah from the audience. <laughs> yes. All right, no one ever does that. It's great. <laughs> but the point is, these skills are applicable across industries, right? So I've worked with student athletes preparing to make their first jump into uh, first-time careers. I've worked with technology companies, advertising agencies, financial companies. So uh, these tools, regardless of what you're interested in and what you're career you're going to be going into next, you can use these in any type of work. So the name of my business is called Oak and Reeds. And the reason I named it that is actually I named it after an Aesop's fable. So has anyone here heard of the Aesop's fable, the Oak and the Reeds? Yeah, it's kind of a lesser known, it's like a B side of the Aesop's fable <laughs> discography. So the story is this pretty simple. There's a big tall oak tree standing by the side of a river and the oak tree is next to some reeds, like little grasses. And the oak tree is saying, you know, look at me, I'm so big and strong, I've got this great trunk, these awesome branches, these deep roots, and you're just a bunch of flimsy reeds. And every time there's a breeze, you basically fall over. I can't imagine how you survived this long. Of course, overnight, there's a big storm with lots of wind and it rips the oak tree out from its roots, killing it instantly. But the reeds survive because they're flexible. Every time there's a breeze, they fall over and then they just pop right back up. So the story here is about flexibility. And that's the message I try to bring to my clients. And that's what we're going to be talking about a lot today. So I really liked that message. So I named my business that because I really believe in it. I also named my business that because the URL was available. <laughs> so to get started, I want to hear the story of your name. All right, so we're just going to warm up, turn to the person next to you, find a partner, and in a minute, just tell them how you got your name, your first name, your family name, a nickname you feel comfortable sharing with classmates. Just take a minute each, and then we'll come back together. We're going to talk about it. Go for it. Uh, so
let's also, I'm going to use a tool today because I realize you are a talkative bunch and uh, it gets loud in here. So whenever I'm ready to bring us back together, I'll raise my hand up. When you see that, just raise your hand up. Everyone else will know it's time to be quiet. We'll move on. It's kind of old elementary school trick. So I would love to hear anyone's story here that feels comfortable sharing. We have time for one or two people to share theirs or you can share your partner's story or you can throw your partner under the bus and ask them to share their story. Um, either way, I'd love to, I heard a couple really great ones, if anyone feels comfortable. Yeah. I'd love to share Erin's story. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, Erin uh, was born a boy. Did I say that right? No. <laughs> she was going to be a boy. Uh, and so I wanted to name her Carl. Uh, and then she turned out wasn't a boy. And so she became Erin, which is also the name of the green beanie baby, uh, which she coveted as a nine-year-old child. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, who else? Who wants to share theirs? Simple. Yeah. Oh. We'll go here and then there. <laughs> some of them work, some of them don't work. I, I do. <laughs> so my, um, my full name is Isid Adawi, and it's a name from southern Nigeria. And my dad is a doctor, and when I was born, was um, all this training, and so the literal translation is where the day breaks are my times. So. Oh. Yeah, round of applause. Very cool. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. We got one more. We had a hand over here. So Azad was born in 1990 and in Kazakhstan, and Azad in Arabic in Kazakhstan means freedom, independence. That was the year the country gained their independence. So his grandfather named him Azad. So, what's it like when you hear someone's name? Like, just quick reactions. What did you get from that? What did you learn, or what would it feel like? Yeah. Sometimes there's a sense of meaning or purpose put into it that makes it special. Totally. Yeah. You get a little extra meaning with that person, where they come from. Absolutely. Had you heard these stories before? Yeah, it's kind of new, which is amazing because you've been with these folks for a little over a month now. Um, part of the reason I like to do this, one, it's fun, it's interesting, it's a good way to get to know someone you're just sitting next to. Um, but also, as we're going today, as we're going along, I want you to remember back to this exercise because a lot of what we're doing today is going to be generating ideas, coming up with new concepts, you're going to be thinking on your feet. And a lot of people get nervous, get clammed up, don't feel like they have great ideas. Everyone has really interesting backstories, regardless of where you come from or your background. You alone are the only person that can tell that story that you just told. So as we're going along today, the ideas that you come up with, those are the best possible ideas you could come up with at any given time. And you're probably the only person in the world that would think of that idea in that moment. So be confident in your ability to be creative, because whatever comes out, it's unique and interesting. And if it's not, we'll just move on because we're going to go do tons of different exercises today. So we'll keep going. Today, we're only going to do a couple things. We have about 90 minutes, so we're going to go quickly. You're not going to become expert improvisers by any means, but you're going to learn a couple tools today. The first, we're going to talk about yes and. We're going to talk about this idea of yes and and how it applies in collaboration and in teamwork and in a corporate environment. And who here has heard of this idea of yes and? Yeah, I was going to say, if you raised your idea hand for doing improv before and didn't, I would be very suspicious. Um, so we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about this idea of working through uncertainty. So a lot of what improvisation is, is a skill that you develop as a way to work through uncertainty in unknown situations. Because so much of what happens at work and in different environments is you reacting to things you couldn't possibly have predicted. Improvisation is a set of tools that helps you work through that, helps you deal with the emotions, helps you deal with the mental processes to come up with ideas, helps you deal with the people around you who are throwing unexpected curveballs at you. So that's a really big, meaty topic that everything has to do with. And at the end, we're going to talk about public speaking. So we're going to end with an exercise that one of my favorites, and we're going to talk about how you can become a much more precise public speaker using a couple of point of view exercises. And we'll get to that in a second. So at the end, we're going to have an opportunity for a couple people to come take the center stage from me and do some speaking. So if that person is you, I'm excited. <laughs> if it's not you, don't worry. Not everyone is going to have to do that one. So that's, that's basically the outline of what we're doing today. Any questions about any of this? Make sense? 
Does everyone have enough beer and water <laughs> and carbs? <laughs> it's a carb-fueled event tonight. I'm excited. All right, so I know that this is kind of me just throwing my understanding of what you're here to do. I know <laughs> you are interested in learning new skills. I know you want to have something come out of this. There has to be some ROI today. Uh, I know some folks get a little nervous showing uncertainty in front of other people. That may be you, may not be you. Um, and I know that you want to have some takeaways that you can use right away in classwork. What else brought you here today? Why are you here? Is there something that's missing that you want to get out of today that maybe I haven't mentioned yet or that you just came up with? Have fun. Have fun. Good. We'll definitely have fun today. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else or questions, things you're, you wanna, you're curious about? If not, we can just keep going. Awesome. If at any point you have a question, stop me. We can talk about it, but let's just get right into it. So let's warm up. Uh, this is one of my favorite exercises. It's going to get a little crazy because we have a lot of people here. And it's called triangle offense. It has nothing to do with basketball, but I just really like this gift. And I like basketball. <laughs> so the way this is going to work is uh, you just, you're going to stand up. Stand up. <laughs> and what I want you to do is pick two people, and let's actually get some folks to come down here up front. We're going we're gonna to use the entire room for this one. I want you, in your head, to pick two people. All right? Pick two people. One person is going to be your defender, and one person is going to be your pursuer. All right? One defender, one pursuer. And when I say go, you're going to walk, not run, you're going to walk to align yourself so you are between, so sorry, so your defender is between you and your pursuer, all right? So your defender is here, your pursuer is there, you're here, right? Does that make sense? So your defender is kind of protecting you from your pursuer. Obviously, everyone's going to pick different people, so uh, it's going to get a little wild. So in your head, pick those two people. When I say go, you're going to try to line yourself up so your defender is between you and your pursuer. Ready? So they don't know. <laughs> Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. All right, so let's say, let's say, uh, what's your name? Baku. Baku. You're, you're going to be my defender. Okay. And let's, what's your name? Francesca. Francesca, you're my pursuer. I'm going to try to line myself up so you are between me and, and you. Does that make sense? Yeah. But you're also going to have two other people on your own, so you're going to be moving as well Thank to you. line yourself up. Right, and are we communicating? No. Uh, you're, not, you're just doing this in your head. You just, every you know, you're just yeah. like following yeah. around. Yeah. Let's try it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, if, we, yeah. if it doesn't make sense, we're going to try it again. All right, so pick two people. Ready? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> between them and their pursuer. Okay, who are your two people? Jonah and Jack. Jonah and Jack. Right? Oh, nice. Nice. Who else was able to do it? Yeah, over, how about over here? Yeah, who are your two people? Uh, was my pursuer, and then was my... Nice. Very good. Anyone here? Who got it over here? Yeah, who are your two people? Jordan and Danny. Okay, nice. Very nice. All right, we're going to try it again. Does that make sense for the folks who are a little, a little confused? You were amazing. You're my defender. You're my defender. Pick two new people. Pick two brand new people in your head. All right, when I say go, you're going to walk, don't run, and you're going to try to try to align yourself so your defender is between you and your pursuer. All right, pick those two people. Three, two, one, go. Sorry. <laughs> 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 All right, five, 
four, three, two, one, freeze. Everyone freeze. <laughs> okay, before I ask who did it, what do we notice there at the end when I start counting? What happens? <laughs> it starts scampering to figure it out. Yeah, which is really interesting. Okay, so who was able to do it? Who got their, their people in a line? Yeah, over there. Who were your two folks? Libby and Blakey. Libby oh. and Blakey. 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 Nice. <laughs> Long distance. Yeah. Sorry, not Blakey. No worries. Um, who were you two folks? Danny Long and Kevin. Danny and Kevin. Okay, cool. All right, so we're getting better at this. I'm going to change up the rules. We're going to do this one more time. But this time, what we're going to be doing, this is where the triangle part comes in. You're going to pick two people, just like you did before, but instead of making a line, what you're going to make now is an equilateral triangle. Okay? <laughs> okay? Does that make sense? So if, uh, um, what was your name? Vicky. Vicky and Vicky. Jonah were my two people, I tried to line myself so we were in kind of an equilateral triangle, kind of like this. Okay? I'm going to add another wrinkle. The last two times when I started counting us down, everyone started sprinting, right, <laughs> to find their people. What happens when we do that? It's dangerous. It is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's why I have insurance for my company. But what else happens in terms of the, in terms of the exercise? Spiral's out of control. Yeah, talk more about what happens with that. If someone else is running, I have to run to maintain the line, and then everyone's running. <laughs> exactly. It's, it spirals out of control. Perfectly said. This time, the goal is not to just get your triangle aligned. The goal is for everyone to get their triangles. So try to move in a way that makes it easier for those around you to react off of you. Does that make sense? We're going to try to everyone make that triangle. All right, so pick your two people. Pick your two folks. I'm going to count us in. And then when I start counting us down, don't run. Okay? <laughs> We're trying to make it so everyone gets it. All right, pick your folks. Start in three. Two, one, go. <laughs> Settling in. Alright, I'm gonna count as five. Four. Don't run. Three. Two. One and a half. One. Alright, freeze. Freeze. Okay. Um who was able to make their triangle? That's not bad. Yeah, okay, so who are your who was your triangle? Um, Maggie and Hannah. Maggie and Hannah. Nice. That looks good to me. <laughs> who are your folks? Nick and Bacon. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> who are, yeah. So what else? Someone else show me your triangle. These two yeah. right here. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty close. Wow. Nice. These two. <laughs> <laughs> You're tall enough you can just grab them out of nowhere. Um, so what was different? What was different about that time? What do we see go differently in the way that exercise the third time we did it? How did that go differently? Yeah. Well, the first time I thought we were all kind of against one another. We were all trying to like, you know, compete against each other. And this time it felt a lot more like just there was more awareness of everyone else and, and their goals to get the triangle. So it's more likely to like, not rush and get spot. Yeah. And what the way I phrase it, I never said it was a competition. Right? For the first two times. We just naturally we're do that. School, we're in right? school. Yeah, we're in business school. We're in business right? competition. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I make it a collaborative a collaborative effort and everyone immediately was able to do it. Um, did we notice anything else about that second time? It's easier to react to what other people are doing. Yeah, why was that? Because you're I guess to less explain you're noticing people more, but because also people are moving slower it's easier for you to kind of course correct as you go. Yeah, every, exactly. So you're, the way people are moving makes it easier for you to do what you're trying to do as well. Um, so we're going we're gonna to move on from this exercise, but the, the big takeaway here is in improv, it's a team sport, right? So you are working within a team. You're trying to make each other look good. That's a big thing in improv. You talk about making your teammates look good because if you do that for them, they're going to trust that, that 
is going to come back to you. So if you make them look good, they're going to make you look good, and there's kind of this back and forth that amplifies itself. If we're trying to compete to see who has the best idea in an improv scene or an improv show, it looks terrible, right? So as we're going along today, there's that idea. I want you to think about making people look good. Like, what are you doing to make this exercise easier for your partner? Um, and then there's also this other idea in this exercise about peripheral vision. So in improv, it's always you're kind of paying attention to multiple things at once. You've got multiple balls in the air. So it's a muscle. It's a hard thing to practice, but that's why I love warming up with this exercise, because it gets at both of those really meaty, meaty ideas. Okay. Let's try something different. I'm excited to do this with a large group. I want to see if we can make a circle. Can we make a circle with every, where everyone can see each other? I'm wondering if we go back around like the stairs over there and all the way to the back. I think we can do it. We can make a big circle. And if that's too big, we can actually make it smaller. Is that too big? Yeah, why don't you come down, come down to like the second row here. The second row, and we'll kind of have it jump the fence there. Yeah, that row right there. You fill that out. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> Alright, can everyone fit? <coughs> Perfect. Okay. This is a, uh, for those of you who've done improv before, you've probably played this game. It's called Pass the Energy. It's a clapping game. Has anyone here played this exercise before? A couple, couple of the improv folks. Okay. So this is a classic one. So the way this is going to work is we're in a big circle, and I'm going to start a clap, all right? And we're going to pass it around the circle. It's going to get, it's going to be a little slow, but we're going to get quicker with it as we go. The key thing in here is you really need to focus on the person next to you, all right? So we'll, the way it'll work is I'll turn to you, we're going to clap together, and then you're going to turn, and you're going to pass it to the next person. It's going to keep going all the way around the circle. So what you want to do, we're going to keep in rhythm, all right? You want to keep the rhythm, you want to look the person in the eye, you want to make sure that they're seeing you pass this to them. Really simple. All right, I'm going to pause it when it gets to Jack. All right, don't worry. The other half of the room, you're going to get it eventually. <laughs> yeah, eventually. Um, so key things here, eye contact, focusing on the rhythm, um, and making sure your partner sees you. All right, this is all about passing the clap to the next person. I'm going to add a rule, okay? So this time, if the clap comes to you, so let's say you're passing it to me, if I stay here and keep eye contact and clap a second time, it reverses it, okay? So it goes back around the other way. Does that make sense? So it's up to the person receiving it to decide, I'm not going anywhere, I'm going to clap a second time, and I'm going to send it right back. All right? So Jack, why don't you keep it going that way? I'm going to start a second one. All right? So be aware. Be aware. Nice. Out. <laughs> just figure out a way to 
pass it back both ways. All right, that's part of it. When something crazy like that happens, a lot of what improv is is just figure out a way to just pick up the pieces and keep the energy going. All right, so it's up to you to figure out how you wanna how you wanna do that. Also, this game can get a little overwhelming, but all you have to do is pay attention to the two people on either side of you. That's really all that matters because it's only gonna come from your left or your right. All right. So here's what we'll do. I'll have Jack start a clap over there. Where's Hannah? We'll have her start a clap over there. I'll start a clap in a moment. We may add more. It's going to get a little wild. So just stay focused and you'll do fine. All right? Let's go for it. Exercise, but let's talk about applications. You know, we're doing these exercises for a reason. Thinking about what skill we're practicing with an exercise like that. What? It's obviously you're not going to sit around a boardroom and clap in a circle. But what are we kind of replicating here? Where Where would you see something like this happening in a, in an organization? Yeah. Kind of like the flow of discussion in a meeting. Yeah. Talk more about that. How would that look? Like if you see that, um, I don't know. You can that where the discussion is heading and there's some sort of a rhythm of people jumping to give their ideas and also like <coughs> balancing when to listen versus when to contribute to kind of align with that. Yeah, two great call outs there. This whole idea of when, you know, how is the energy moving? How can you just keep things passed along? Definitely. Yeah, what else? You also can't control when you'll get hit with two big projects at once. And so <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And it's kind of up to you to figure out what you do when that happens. It's out of your control. Definitely. Um, even when there's a lot of like tumultuous things going on around you, you just stay grounded and stay focused on like maybe the smaller pieces and you can still be successful. Yeah, I think that's really great. You're looking out and you're seeing this 50 people all <laughs> going bonkers over this game. But all you can control really is the two people, your interaction with those two folks next to you. Yeah. Um, those are all really great call outs. I, I honestly don't have other, other takeaways from that. This is really a metaphor. It's a metaphor for how we interact in large organizations, how you can be just part of a chain and part of moving information along, but also just figuring out how you can take an exercise that really seems chaotic and complicated and simplify it just into the two things you really need to do can help you out a lot. This is all about dealing with uncertainty. Again, that big, that big idea of improvisation as a way to practice working through uncertainty, this is an exercise for that. Okay, let's move on to the big, big idea with improv. Um, 
we all know who these two amazingly talented women are, right? Who are they? Oh. You don't know who they are. Who are they? Someone, someone Tina help our friend. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. Yeah. So, Tina Fey and Amy Poehler are one incredibly talented, incredibly funny, but two of the best practitioners in the world of this idea of yes and. So we've all seen them do comedy together when they hosted. This is from them. Uh, I think it's from them hosting the Golden Globes together. Really funny duo. And what makes them so funny and so great at their jobs is they use yes and in their comedy. Every time one of them says an idea, the other one agrees with it, builds on it, and they're constantly going back and forth. So this idea of yes and, I know a lot of hands went up earlier when I said who here has heard of it. So does anyone here want to give a definition of what yes and is or what their understanding of yes and means? Jack. Um, I would say like yes and is accepting and building on an offer yeah of some sort like someone has offered you an idea or just a suggestion of some sort and you're just going to accept it and you're going to take it maybe even a step further perfect yeah is, does anyone else have other understandings of where they've heard yes and or how they've practiced it Yeah. Oh, I think it can be a really good replacement for no. Um, so <laughs> I find myself being like, no, that's a stupid idea. Yes. I would never take that. Um, <laughs> right. Replacing that with a yes and, to Jack's point, like flips it and turns it into an opportunity. Definitely. Yeah, that's a great example. Yeah. I think when you're in the brainstorming part of a project, when you're kind of diverging, like I know I always want to be like, how practical is this? Let's get real. But instead, when we're in the brainstorming, we're like, yeah, okay, great. And to take it even further, we could do this and this and this and like really like idea generation brainstorming mode is really valuable. Yeah, yeah, you're already getting an application, which is great. Yeah, and as a brainstorming tool, this is phenomenal, right? It's a great way to <clears throat> expand the world and see how many different directions you can go with certain ideas. Uh, thank you for offering definitions. I, the way I see yes and, especially in this kind of context when we're talking about how it applies at work, is when you yes and an idea, what you're doing is you're giving an idea space to breathe. You're just acknowledging an idea as valid. So that's the yes part. Because a lot of times at work or in class or in projects, we obviously can't say yes to everything, but you can acknowledge ideas as valid and see if you can move it forward in some way. It may end up being that idea is trash and you're not going to use it, but the point is if you call it out as trash right off the bat, you're never going to see where that second idea or that third idea or that tenth idea to come of it leads you because you've stopped the conversation and you're on to a new topic already. So the idea is giving an idea space to breathe, adding your idea to move it forward, and seeing where that takes you. Because like in a brainstorm, you can always go back and edit at the end. But if you start editing on the fly, you're going to limit your amount of ideas. And um, you're also going to, it's going to be tough because people won't feel supported in the way they share ideas. So that's the concept of yes and. I want to practice it, OK? <coughs> so oh, this is, this is a cartoon I like. It's pretty simple. Basically, I forgot it was here. <laughs> Basically, uh, we're talking about where should we go on vacation. This is a practical application of yes and. Someone could say, let's go to the beach. Someone says, yes, but, like you're saying with a no. Yes, but there are sharks at the beach, right? Conversation over. Or you could say, where should we go on vacation? Oh, let's go to Lake Tahoe. Yeah, if we go to Lake Tahoe, we can go skiing or water skiing. Yeah, if we do that, then we could go, you know, get a boat. All that, you see where the conversation leads you. You may not end up going to Lake Tahoe, but you've kind of explored the idea a lot more thoroughly than you would have had you just shut the idea off right off the bat. So let's practice this. Does everyone here have a pen? Not everyone here has a pen. If you don't have a pen, ask the person next to you if they have a pen. <laughs> All right. Also, a couple pens here. Um, and does everyone here have paper? I have paper. Oh, these are nice. My dad put those buttons. Um, no? Yes, yes, yes. All right. yes. Paper's coming around. Okay. 
All right, does everyone have something to write with and something to write on? You're good? You need something. Oh, no, I thought you were raising your hand. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's great. We're being quiet. Okay, the way this exercise works, we're going to practice this idea of yes and. It's really simple. So on your sheet of paper, what I want you to do is just write down your three favorite things. Just three things. It doesn't have to be your end-all, be-all favorite. Just write three things you really like. All right, write them down quickly. If I were to do this, I would say I love doing improv. That's me doing improv with my scene partner, Pamela. She's actually chopping a pineapple on my back. And that's me cooking. I love cooking. Um, and I love watching the Patriots play football. So yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that usually does. That's not a fan favorite here. So write down three things, and when you're done, just pop your head up so I know you're all set. Do they have any activities? Nope. Any ideas, people, things, places? write down your three favorite things. And what you're going to do now is find a partner. It could be the person sitting next to you, it could be a new partner. Just find a partner, make eye contact with them. And what you're going to do is take the items on each